Hey, this is Troutman. Thanks for joining me. I want to show you something good. I'm going to show you the George Harvey Dry Fly Leader. I want to talk about how it's built, how it's designed to do some really unique things. You can get some beautiful dead drifts with slack built into the cast. That's what the leader is designed to do for you. But you have to be able to adjust it. Uh, you need to sometimes adjust the tippet or adjust even the way you're going to cast it to, to get that kind of slack line turnover still. So it helps to understand the unique things that the leader can do because of how it's built. So we're going to run through all that. Are you ready? Here we go. So the Harvey is a slack leader design and that means you can cast and get that slack that necess those necessary S curves to your dry fly in the cast. So with that intentional casting, you can build these S curves throughout the whole leader, not just in the tippet section, but even in the butt section and especially in that middle section. So most other leader formulas that you find and almost all the extruded leaders that you can buy in the fly shop are built for power. And you'll see that on the package. They'll say power taper, really emphasizing that turnover. Now the Harvey will turn all the way over when you want it to. And if you build it that way, you can get that full turnover. And I'll show you a stop and drop kind of cast that I, I use that full turnover for. You can poke it and punch it underneath the limbs, do whatever you want, get that full turnover. But the Harvey will also allow you to build necessary slack into the leader in the air and even on the way down. You can get a really nice underpowered cast with the Harvey as well. So listen, dry flies need slack, right? For it to drift drag free, it needs slack. And most leader designs and dry fly casting styles will have you put the line on the water, often straight out, and then mend to give that dry fly slack. To me, it's too late. It's too late to do that. I'd much rather build that slack, as I'm talking about, into the cast, and so it's going to land. The fly lands with the tippet and a lot of the leader having these S curves behind it to give it that necessary slack to drift the right way. So fly lines have the power. Fly lines are doing the job of pushing the unweighted dry fly out there. I don't need the power in my leader. I don't want that much power in my leader. The fly line does the job. And what we want to do, what I want to do with this Harvey leader is dissipate the power from the fly line. It almost has too much power. It has, it's a good thing, but then I want to take that power out. That's what the leader is designed to do with kind of this compound taper that I'm going to show you. So how do we do this? How do we generate that necessary slack and all those nice S curves? There are two ways I'm going to show you here in a minute. I do a stop and drop, and then I do a lagging curve. And let's get to that. But first, let me show you uh, the recipe, the leader formula, and the way it's built. All right, let's look at what makes the Harvey leader different. It starts with the butt section. This is maxima chameleon 15 pound. Uh, Mike's out at 0.015 inches. And now most other leaders are 0.020, 0.022, even 0.025 diameter, way thicker, and therefore more powerful. Again, there's plenty of power built into this Maxima Chameleon butt section. So this is 15 pound. It's about, I don't know, 20 inches right now. And then this is 12 pound. This is 10 pound. This is the eight pound. And you'll notice again that each one of those sections gets shorter, a little longer, and then shorter, shorter, and shorter. That's your butt section into your midsection. Now here, we transition to tippet material. And you can see that color change from the brown chameleon to this is Orvis Super Strong. That's 2x. And now watch, this is going to get longer to 3x, longer to the 4x section, and then to my last section a 5x. In this case, about two and a half feet long for my terminal tippet. Now that's the thing. It's the butt section diameter being thicker. And then the other thing that really is the magic to the Harvey leader is the way it got the taper goes progressively shorter, shorter, shorter in the stiffer material and then longer, longer, longer in the tippet material. All right, so there's a lot to this and I don't want to leave you hanging or wondering about things. You need the full recipe. That's going to be in the description below, the description for this video. I also have written two or three articles on trout bitten about the George Harvey leader design. I'll leave those links to those articles in the description below. And if you don't want to tie the knots, I do sell these leaders, you know, pre-made on the trout bitten shop. Hey, real quick, I want to show you my favorite pair of waders. This video is sponsored by Squala, and I'm excited to be working with them because they're making some of the best apparel in the industry right now. These are the Squala Carbon Waders. I've been wearing these for 
almost 100 days now. These have almost 100 days on them with no issues. So don't sleep on the carbons. Squala also makes the RS wader, sort of a full featured wader with, you know, the zipper, thicker material, and more pockets. But they built the carbon wader to be light, and tough, and durable, and super comfortable, and that's exactly what they are. The legs are articulated with kind of an athletic cut, and the material is light and breathable making it easy to spend all day on the water. The suspenders are padded without adding extra bulk. And this magnetic drop-down design here with no buckles allows for super quick conversion to waist high. And you don't need a built-in zipper to relieve yourself. The carbon waders are all about comfort and durability. And I think that's what we're all looking for out here. Check them out at squallafishing.com. And you can get 10% off your order by going to squallafishing.com and using the discount code TROUTBITTEN10. Thanks to Squalla for supporting the Trout Bitten Project and keeping all of us comfortable and ready on the water. So let me show you a couple really cool things we can do with this leader in the presentation. So two things I really want to show you that you can do with this leader. Works really well. Um, the first one is a stop and drop. It's really a standard cast, 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock. I'm going to stop it. I'm not going to drop it yet. I'm going to stop it. And the leader's gonna go all the way out. I do get that full turnover. The leader's gonna go all the way out, kinda gets to the end, it sort of shocks back. It doesn't have any weight, of course. The dry fly is air resistant, so it gets out and kinda starts coming back a little bit, and that's when I'm dropping the rod. This all happens bang, bang. But that's when I'm dropping the rod. So as the, as the fly's coming back and the leader's kinda relaxing, then I'm dropping the rod and putting even more slack into the system. And again, you can, you can get very accurate, just as accurate as you want to be with these tactics, with this leader, once you get used to it. I'm here, I'm going stop and drop. And you can do this with other leader builds, but it, my gosh, it is really nice with this leader. Stop and drop. There's nothing real fancy about it, but the leader is built to land in these S curves that you can see. I don't care about S curves in my fly line. That doesn't matter. I need the S curves, especially in the tippet, but I like them in the midsection, even in the butt section with this leader. The stop and drop really does that for you. All right, the other one I want to show you is what I call a lagging curve. Importantly, this is not an overpowered curve. When you talk about a curve cast, often people are thinking how the leader goes, extends all the way out, and then powerfully curves around. You put the curve in by overpowering the leader. We're doing the opposite here. This is a lagging curve. I'm um, going to cast this way, and what you're going to see is that the leader is going to draw that way. That's my forehand lagging curve. I'm taking it from this almost vertical stop and drop angle, and I'm bringing my arm slot down to about a 45 degrees, uh, 45 degree or, or even flatter, like that. It's drawn that way every time. But the key part to this lagging curve is to bring this arm slot from here down to here. That sets it up real nice. And I'm gonna get, right, by lagging, I mean that the, I'm never giving the leader a chance to fully turn over. Now that does not mean that I'm casting lazy, I'm not trying to go, oh, I don't want any power in it. Because that's not gonna work for you. You're not gonna have the accuracy there. You're just backing off the power and, and the punch. You kind of feel it at the, at the rod tip a little bit. You still want that nice, crisp stop. But the leader does the work of giving you that lagging curve. Show you a couple times here. I have the fly landing to the right in this case uh, of the fly line. That one's nice, that one's real nice. You can really then get the curve part upstream of your dry fly. Now, I'll show you the stop and drop and the lagging curve in dedicated videos coming up someday. I even have a fish along series that's coming out and you know some first person stuff of actual fishing put all this together and you'll see the lag and curve over and over and how it really works for you same thing with the stop and drop i should also mention uh we have why you need a forehand and a backhand for casting right and that that, that just goes for all types of casting but here for this lag and curve my for if i drop my arm here i'm going to get that curve to draw that way well if i i don't want to draw the curve that way uh on my backhand side so i bring my my arm slot this way, and now I can draw a curve that way. You got your forehand curve, lagging curve, and your backhand lagging curve. You gotta have both. We have a full video out for that. All right, that leads me to my last point. We need to adjust the tippet section to match the conditions. Again, if it's windy, I'm gonna need a little bit more power in that tippet. And especially to match uh, the air resistance 
of the dry fly. And notice I said air resistance and not necessarily size because it's the air resistance, the bushiness, how it holds itself back uh, in the air. Th those qualities of the fly are what matter. Even the weight of the dry fly, and that sounds silly, but dubbing can hold some water. That water weight of the fly can actually help that turnover and it can hurt the presentation. Because again, what we're trying for here is a lagging curve. I'm gonna have my baseline cast, my baseline cast, and I can get more powerful or I can back off that a little bit and get a little bit more of a lag. So if that cast is turning over too much, then I need, well, less power in the leader. So I will lengthen the tippet section or go lighter, maybe even to 6X. And if the opposite is happening, if I just can't get it to turn over with that baseline cast, then I need more power in the leader. So I might go to 4X or I'll go shorter on the tippet section. There's a lot to it. You just gotta go out there, try it yourself. Be very willing to make those changes and just see how it goes. That's the only way to learn is to do it yourself. All right, there's a lot more to be said here, but that should give you a really good start on the Harvey Dry Leader. Remember the full formula, the leader build is in the description below. Those article links are down there. And if you wanna buy a Harvey Leader in the trout bitten shop, they're there for you. Remember, it is slack on the surface to the dry fly that sells the dead drift. So get out there, fish hard friends, have fun. Cameras would be so much better without a lens. <laughs> you could like a, I could, I could put like a little picture of like a right little here. face. Yeah. All right, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Say when. What's the word? Action. Here we go. Like that? Yeah, just like that. <laughs>